Italy is in a state of economic decline, one which has been building for over 20 years. The country was once an economic powerhouse, with a strong manufacturing sector, a healthy workforce and a high birth rate. But now businesses are closing, and even though youth unemployment is at a 20-year low, the country is experiencing one of the biggest brain drains in its history, as tens of thousands of skilled workers, the lifeblood of its economy, leave the country each year, which costed an estimated 14 billion euros between 2008 and 2016, not to mention further losses in the future. Part of the problem lies with this graph. This is the country's real GDP, the total output of their economy adjusted for inflation. It's almost the same as it was in 2005, meaning the country has seen no real economic progress in over two decades. It suffered particularly large blows from the 2008 financial crisis and the COVID pandemic. But as other large European and comparable economies recovered and have continued to grow, Italy has remained stagnant. Over a similar 20-year period from 1999, the income of the average Italian is now 10% less than the average Eurozone country. By comparison, in neighboring Slovenia, the average citizen now has a wage 15% higher than 20 years ago, after adjusting for inflation. Stagnant real wages have been a problem for many OECD countries, but Italy has seen the largest fall in real wages across all of the large European economies. With a GDP of $2.1 trillion, Italy is by no means a small economy, it's the eighth largest in the world, and has been in the top 10 largest economies globally for the last 40 years. However, a combination of economic factors have started a decline, and as many emerging economies globally have grown, forecasts predict that Italy will continue to fall down the international rankings to 14th by 2030. The Italian economy was not always like this. It was once one of the most promising and exciting in the world. Experiencing considerable growth after the Second World War, in the period between 1950 and 1980, being described as the Italian economic miracle. Like many other countries in Europe, World War II had destroyed many parts of Italy, and by 1945, lots of the country's major cities were in ruin having been bombed heavily and occupied by different armies. Previously, an enemy of the United States, Italy's advantageous geographical position between Northern Europe and the Mediterranean, as well as its proximity to the Iron Curtain, meant it was now an ally for the new free world. Between 1947 and 1951, the US gave Italy over $1.2 billion under the Marshall Plan. This was used to greatly expand Italy's manufacturing sector, and with the Korean War and creation of the European common market, there was a greater demand for Italy's products and fewer trade restrictions. This was paired with a large labor force, which fueled strong economic growth for Italy in the 20-year period following World War II. However, this was brought to an end in 1970 as a series of economic and political issues ended its honeymoon period of economic growth. Italy's economy still continued to grow, but a key component of sustainable long-term growth began to falter. Productivity. Italy's total factor productivity contributed for over half of the economic growth in the miracle period following the war, but after 1970, this all changed. The key driver of their economic growth, total factor productivity, started to stall around 1970 and has since fallen by 13.7% in the 50 years which lead up to 2019 and now is actually taking away from current growth. Whilst the Italian economy still grew in the 80s and 90s by implementing policies like deficit spending and currency devaluation, these were short-term stimulus which were unsustainable and did nothing to increase their TFP. A key reason why the economy has stagnated and real GDP has fallen, this has led to a workforce that produces less as the value each worker has added per unit of input has declined by 5%. Productivity is incredibly important for a country to achieve economic growth. Allowing a country to increase their economic output without increasing their labor force or their stock of capital. Italy's poor productivity is caused by factors like cumbersome labor regulations and judicial inefficiencies, both of which contribute to an inefficient public sector, creating an environment where it's hard to develop new business, meaning less investment and less growth. A public sector which is inefficient will hinder firms in any country, but this is particularly profound in Italy. Research conducted in 2015 found that Italian firms have greater dependency on the public sector, and for a firm in a sector with above-median dependence on the government, being in a province with above-median public efficiency increases output per worker by 13%. This shows the potential gains being missed. They also found that if efficiency rose across the board to this same level, productivity could rise by 22% in poorly affected areas. Inefficiency also extends into areas like the judicial system, where the average days to resolve a legal contract is significantly higher than the OECD average. Speaking to the inefficient environment and explaining why so few new businesses are being created in Italy. Productivity mismatches extend across the nation. Italy, 
like many countries, has a geographical divide. In this case, it's between the north and the central and southern regions. Productivity tends to be highest in northern Italy. This is a region of industry famously sporting the Industrial Triangle, which links the cities of Milan, Genoa and Turin. The area is characterized by a modern group of industries focused on naval production, machinery and automobiles, whereas southern and central Italy have a less developed, highly subsidized agricultural economy with a legacy of unemployment and underdevelopment. The northern regions tend to have higher levels of public sector efficiency than the south and a firm in the north produces 9.5%, more per euro spent on employees than the median firm in the south. This is mainly due to factors like lower infrastructure spending, low investment in human capital and, of course, higher public sector inefficiency. This graph demonstrates the ideal demographic breakdown of an economy. We can see that most of the population is concentrated in lower and middle age groups, which translates to a strong working force and potential for economic growth in the future. This, however, is Italy's demographic. As we can see, their population is concentrated in the older generations, with fewer younger people being born to fill this gap. This imbalance is a major worry for a stagnant economy like Italy as it adds to falling productivity. As we saw, productivity is needed in the economy to increase output when other factors like the labor force remain constant. However, Italy's aging demographic will mean that the population and people eligible for work will also start to reduce. A shrinking workforce and stagnant productivity is a perfect recipe for a loss of economic growth. This problem seems to be getting worse as Italy's birth rate is the lowest in 50 years and they're experiencing a brain drain as the country's educated professionals are leaving the country to seek employment elsewhere. Besides this, an aging workforce places an increasing burden on the Italian government, as they need to spend more on social welfare for older people. An older population is a more expensive one, and more will need to be spent on services like healthcare and state pension payments. In fact, these payments account for 18.8% of Italy's GDP, something which is likely to rise in the future as more young people leave the country. Another key element of Italy's fiscal expenditure is, of course, the interest payments on its debt. Many nations use debt to finance their spending, but relative to its GDP, Italy has some of the highest levels of public debt in the world, with their debt-to-GDP ratio being 144%. This is a heavy burden on their economy, as lots of money must be diverted away from spending on things which will increase the economic output like infrastructure in order to service their existing debt. As we have seen, Italy's significant levels of debt are an increasing concern due to the slow economic growth that it's experienced over the last two decades. And with high levels of youth unemployment still present, it's difficult to see how they can grow and generate income to pay off this debt. These levels of debt are crippling the Italian economy, making it increasingly difficult to break out the vicious cycle of primary deficits without austerity measures. Some estimates suggest that without its high levels of interest on debt, Italy would be running a comfortable primary surplus, that is, they collect more than they spend. However, this of course isn't the reality, and with its current outlook, it's hard to see how Italy can push past and move forward without experiencing crisis. On the 25th of September 2022, Italy elected Giorgia Maloney to government as part of the right-wing Brothers of Italy party, which was only founded in 2012. This was initially received with international criticism as another country moved towards populist leaders. However, one year in and a few significant economic changes have been made, which spell out her vision to restructure the Italian economy. A lot of the focus has been placed on reducing the gap between government spending and government revenue. Since 2020, this has started to come down, and forecasts show they will be more in tune by 2028. As we saw previously, a large drain on the fiscal purse was welfare payments. As such, one of Maloney's reforms is to reduce the size of the welfare state. This was rolled out in June this year and proved to be unpopular as many citizens will see their welfare payments cut. The government is phasing out a basic income support scheme for low-income households, with the goal, according to Maloney, to transform assistance into work. Measures are also being taken to address Italy's incoming demographic winter. Maloney announced a 50% increase in the baby bonus checks parents receive the first year after the birth of a child and a 50% increase for three years for families with more than three children. Women who choose to extend maternity leave beyond five months for an extra month can do so on 80% of their salary rather than 30%. And efforts are also being made to encourage people to stay in the workforce, with bonuses for those who continue to contribute to their pension. With the aim of reducing this element of government spending, it's clear that Maloney is making an attempt to fix some of Italy's economic issues, but ones which are as deep-rooted as these cannot be solved in a few years with some reforms, and Italy is likely to remain a problem economy, at least for the next few years.